close enough. Okay, let's call to order the planning committee meeting for Wednesday. April 3rd, <laughs> uh, please note the gain's all here except for Kieran Mitchoff. Uh, public comment is now open. Do we have any cards for public comment? Do we have any two of our public that want to speak? Going once, going twice, closed. Approval of the minutes, any additions, corrections? Move approval. Second. Okay, motion, roll make second. Ask you, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, seeing none. Approval of the consent calendar of items one through four. Anybody wish to push on that? Move, Move approval. approval. Ask you. Second. Abelson. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. And then now we're down to the, the long extended uh, approval of resolution 1916G for the senior people with disability program. Pretty straightforward. Do you need to have Peter tell you about it? Or he we have a motion? He's already done an excellent job. In okay. Motion. motion Move ask you. Approval. Second. Second. Abelson. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, James. You better be ready here. Item six is. Results for allocating additional one Bay Area grant to safe routes to school, you're up. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee. This item is to report on the results of recommendations by each of the regional transportation planning committees on how they wish to allocate an additional $822,000 in av available funding for safe routes to school project. And the additional funding was made available after the initial Safe Route to School uh, funding in the OBAG 2 call for project in 2016 and 17. The board in November of 2018 approved a process whereby each of the RTPCs uh, would <clears throat> choose which project to allocate the additional Safe Route to School funding to and the shares are listed in the staff report for each of the RTPCs. As a result, uh, each of the RTPCs in winter of 2018 and 19 met, and their boards uh, ultimately decided to allocate the additional funding to six total projects. Um, further along in the staff report, it indicates that two of the RTPCs chose two different projects, uh, TransPAC and SWAT, and then TransPlan and WICTAC each chose a single project with which to allocate the additional funding. The next step, if the committee and board choose to accept these recommendations, would be for CCTA staff to notify MTC, who would then make an administrative modification to the Transportation Improvement Program and add these funds to those existing projects. So staff recommendation is for uh, the committee and board to accept these RTPC recommendations. And that concludes my report, and I'm available for any questions. Questions of staff? Move Go ahead. Approval. Motion. <laughs> First, <laughs> second. <laughs> any questions? All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. Seeing none, great staff report. Meant that, really. Yeah. Seven is uh, incorporating Plan Bay Area 2040, PBA 2040, land use into the authority's countywide travel demand forecasting model. And that is Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Chair, committee members. So uh, tonight we are here to uh, tell you about the updated uh, travel demand forecasting model. As a congestion management agency, we are uh, legislatively required to uh, maintain and update a uh, travel demand forecasting model, which basically allows us to kind of peer into the future and analyze our uh, transportation projects and uh, local development projects and how they affect the uh, transportation system. So uh, we are also uh, legislatively required to be consistent with MTC's uh, regional model. Um, and so what we do is every uh, four years, it used to be every two years, now it's every four years, MTC, when they adopt their uh, RTP, Regional Trans Transportation Plan, uh, they publish uh, land use, basically households and jobs around the uh, Bay Area uh, through year 2040. Uh, what we do is we take that data and then we um, uh, disaggregate it down to our zone system. We have a much finer uh, zone system in our model, so it's more sensitive to what's going on in Contra Costa County. 
Uh, we take that disaggregated land use data, send it out to all 20 jurisdictions, have them review it and make sure it makes sense to what they know to be on the ground and what they have in their uh, development pipeline. And then we incorporate it into our model uh, and do some uh, sensitivity runs. Uh, we call that validation where we uh, try and uh, match up the counts that are collected on the ground with what the model is actually saying. Um, so when we have that new land use in there, we run the model for 2010 and it uh, spits out uh, traffic volumes on uh, various arterials and freeways around the county. We then compare that to what uh, counts have been collected. So we did this for our base year 2010. Uh, once we get the model to kind of agree with the counts, then we're able to go forecast out to year 2040 or any other interim year. Um, so uh, we last year we did the uh, land use review with, with all the jurisdictions. We received that uh, that feedback back, incorporated that in the model, and then we started the validation effort. Um, for the validation, we have targets, uh, and we try and remain within 10% of those counts. And you can see on uh, the, the first attachment, or sorry, the second attachment, page 7-11, um, where we compare the counts um, and the validate and the uh, the new validation targets. In most locations, we were able to get within 10% of the counts. However, there were a few locations where we were not able to meet that 10% target. Most, the majority of those locations, we also did not meet the target in our last validation, which was done back in 2012. These are generally locations that are very congested, say I-80, 680, Highway 4, where demand just far out outseeds capacity, and it's hard to really nail down um, the counts uh, during the peak period and the peak hour. Um, so we've come up with some kind of justifying factors, which you'll find uh, on pages 7, 4, 7, 5, and 7, 6. Um, we, we all think these are reasonable justifications and reasons why the model may not be uh, nailing it down um, within the 10%. Um, most other agencies don't have these types of targets, so we feel the 10% target is, is very stringent. Um, and so where it exceeds the targets, we've tried to be, um, you know, make a, a reasonable effort to meet the target. And when it doesn't, we've justified it um, in these justifications I mentioned on uh, pages 7, 4 through 7, 6. So um, we took this to TCC last month, explained the effort to them, and they were satisfied with the efforts we went through um, with the validation. I just want to highlight a couple of other things that we did during this update. We used this opportunity to um, incorporate any road improvement that took place uh, between 2012 and 2018. We also found some areas where, say, a city reduced the number of lanes um, on a roadway, and we uh, incorporated that. Uh, we were able to incorporate the road network from Hercules as uh, generated by their general plan update. They updated their circulation element. So we incorporated that. We incorporated the full phasing of State Route 4 improvements in East County. Um, as that was a phased project over time, some of it changed and wasn't reflected in the model, so we made sure that was completely up to date. Um, we went through all five bus agencies and made sure that their uh, schedules and frequencies matched what's in the model. And we also made sure that the new EBART uh, extension was correctly coded into the model. Um, and as well as taking uh, model uh, improvements that were uh, made during the West County High Capacity Transit Study, we incorporated all those uh, updates into the model. So the model uh, is now up to date. It's ready to be used for various analyses, general plan updates, including the county, who's about to um, update their general plan, as well as uh, local traffic impact 
uh, reports, specific plans, and uh, Innovate 680, which is about to kick off. Um, so um, our recommendation is to approve the update of the model with uh, Plan Bay Area 2040 land use and make it available to cities and consultants for uh, analyses of transportation projects and development uh, projects. That completes my report. Questions of staff, comments, cards, motions? I move to accept the report. Darn, she's Second. quick. Motion eight, second A. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Aye. Seeing none. Martin, you got the final item, eight. Uh, the circulation of draft fiscal year. Actually, we're going to let you do it. No, you better do a staff report on that one. You're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Martin Engelman, Deputy Executive Director for Planning at CCTA. And uh, I'm here to present to you a draft budget for the Congestion Management Agency. Um, and this budget comes into you a little bit early because we have to take it to the public managers group for them to review it before the whole budget goes through in June. So um, by way of background, the authority was designated as the Congestion Management Agency, or CMA, for Contra Costa in the early 1990s. And uh, recently, we've changed our name from Congestion Management Agency to County Transportation Agency, CTAs. But until the legislation catches up to our new acronym, we'll continue to be uh, using both acronyms interchangeably. I'm going to use CMA for this report since we'll stick to what the legislation says. So as the CMA, the authority executes the planning functions comprised mainly of the Measure J Growth Management Program, the state equivalent, which is called the Congestion Management Program. And now there's a third program called the Sustainability, the Sustainable Community Community Implementations Program, which we uh, support MTC's development of a sustainable communities plan. To support the Measure J-related functions of the Growth Management Program, our budget uses a portion of the 3% funding allocated from the half-cent sales tax revenues under Measure J to congestion management, transportation planning facilities, and services. So that's a fixed revenue. To support the state-related portions of the work, that is the CMP portion, the authority receives significant funding from federal sources through MTC, federal sources being the Surface Transportation Program or STP funds. We also get some state sources, project and program monitoring funds called PPM, and a contribution of support from the local jurisdictions to pay for some of the federally required local match. The budget's developed by laying out the complete scope of work for the coming year. And the description of the scope of work begins on your page 8-9 of your packet in attachment B. It's called the CMA Program Descriptions and continues through page 819. So if you wonder what it is that the planning department ever does around here, it's on those 10 pages, everything we do. Minor Under transportation, blank. pardon? Minor blank. <laughs> Under transportation planning and growth management, You'll see the following tasks, develop and maintain the travel demand model, which uh, Matt just spoke about, and other planning tools such as uh, geographic information systems and projects databases. We implement and maintain the action plans for routes of regional significance, conduct regional transportation planning activities with the regional committees, including development of the comprehensive transportation plan. We implement and monitor the growth management program and monitor local compliance through the checklist assess and refine the growth management program and the regional transportation programs and implement Measure J. That's all under the fixed 3% effort. Um, then under the statewide effort, congestion management program, we monitor the CMP network, which is essentially our freeways and major arterials, and determine whether there are any level of service exceedances on that network, and we do that every two years. We maintain our forecasting tools, again, the countywide travel demand model, we have to prepare a draft and final congestion management program every two years to satisfy state requirements. Uh, we develop congestion management strategies such as the bike plan and corridor system management plans. We submit project priorities for state and federal funding to MTC for incorporation into their uh, state transportation improvement program and submit, submittal to the California Transportation Commission. 
We implement MTC delegated planning and programming functions such as the One Bay Area Grant Program, Safe Routes to School, Lifeline Transportation, Community-Based Transportation Plans. And we also participate in the Bay Area Partnership, which is where all the C CEOs from all of the transportation agencies get together every quarter or so to talk about uh, regional policy goals. The third program is called Sustainable Community Strategy Implementation, and it involves working uh, on the Regional Transportation Plan to develop the Sustainable Communities Strategy, which is very closely uh, tied to our priority de development areas, the PDAs, you've heard about those. And so figuring out where those PDA are, PDAs are and how they work and how well they're developing and so forth, um, that's part of this uh, uh, SCS implementation program. Uh, there are gonna be some new acronyms coming down the line uh, in 2019, we're going to add um, to priority development areas, uh, uh, priority production areas, and uh, resource priority areas. So get ready for some new acronyms in 2019 if you don't have enough already. Drill for oil, what? So um, all told, this effort is estimated to require 5.3 uh, full-time equivalent employees, or FTEs. The cost total is $3.35 million to implement, and that's 2. 4% below the previous year's budget due primarily to completion of some major big planning efforts like 2017 CTP and the 2018 bike plan. Uh, the growth management portion of the work is 1.41 million. The CMP portion is 1.64 million, about half. And the Sustainable Communities Implementation Program is 300,000 or 9% of the total budget. As far as sources of funds, uh, we uh, do get Federal funds from MTC, federal money comes uh, through surface transportation program at an amount of 1.18 million. That offsets part of the cost of the budget. Secondly, we're receiving uh, grant funds from MTC for our community-based transportation plans. And um, we're also getting uh, grant funds for um, looking, uh, for studying our priority development areas. There is a joint powers agreement established between the 20 jurisdictions and CCTA that was established in 1993 designating the authority as the CMA for Contra Costa and it lists out all of our responsibilities as an agency and it requires that in April of each year the authority distributes a preliminary draft budget to the Public Managers Association and that specifies the local contribution need. We need to support this and so the gap this year for local contribution is uh, slightly higher than last year. Last year it was estimated at 380,000 uh, for the 20 jurisdictions. This year it's slightly higher at $409,521. I should mention that historically expenditures have been lower than the budgeted contribution amount because annual CMA buildings, billings to local jurisdictions are assessed based on actual expenditures incurred and they're generally lower, much lower than the estimate. So in closing, this completes my summary report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions of staff, comments, cards, motion, Romick, second? Ask you. All those in favor, say aye. Thanks, Martin. That was good. Other business? Anybody from staff with other business? Mr. Iwasaki. Commissioner, I just wanted to say that we were recently notified, actually on April Fool's Day, that we received a, a $9, 8000000 million grant to do a mobility on demand pilot project here in Contra Costa County. It was nothing. <laughs> and uh, it's got an, it's a three year, three year program and the total budget with match is just over $17 million. So it's a, it's pretty good for, for us. If you look at, there was 51 applicants. They selected 10 agencies, University of Alabama, eight state departments of transportation, and then us. And so that's, that's, that's pretty good. So. Thank you for all of your support, your letters of support. I think they really help. Uh, you know, I, now you got me started. I, I joke about this, but I, I swear there's no better way to put this than just put it. We can't send Randy away enough. It makes a difference when you go back with that team in D.C. They know who we are. When you think about that in this country, 5,000, well, how many cities throughout the country and counties and the amount of pressure from the East Coast to get money, it's like L.A. here. And we come back, how many other little agencies got money? Zero. 
and it's because you keep going back and back and back and back and work it, and that's why it's paying off. Any other business? Ladies, gentlemen, we are adjourned to May 1st, 6 p.m.